Hello, everybody. It is Fly Girl VSG Lindsay coming into you with my um, 18 month surge anniversary Q and A. Um, this has been pending for quite some weeks. Sorry to show you the bat wings. I I didn't flat iron my hair today, so it's a little it's a little frizzy and out of control. Um, flat iron it tomorrow, but today it's just this is as good good as this is all I have time for. So pardon my appearance, but um. See if I can get some better lighting here. So um, I'm going to try to do this all. I, I didn't read through the questions um, very thoughtfully. I, I made a record of the questions, but um, but didn't uh, necessarily give much thought. So we'll see what my answers are. Um, but tomorrow is my 18 month surge anniversary. I had December. Um, I had December. I had surgery December 5th, 2013. I've lost 100, just about 115 pounds. Um, 120 at my lowest, but um, 115 as of today. So I'm just going to jump right in if that's okay with you guys. I'm super stoked to be doing this. I think that it's super valuable to find out um, answers to questions as people go along in their journeys. You know, I certainly watched videos like this when I was um, six months out for people who are a year out or at, when I was a year out for people who were two years out. So it kind of, you know, helps you learn what to expect and just whatever. Um, so anyway, I don't know if anybody will get anything useful out of this, but um, I'm just going to go ahead and shut up because... I'll just keep talking. Um, so my friend Lori, who's a personal friend of mine, um, asked me if people are treating me differently. Uh, and that's a great question. And one I've given quite a bit of thought to over the last 18 months. Um, I would say a little bit um, yes and a little bit no, meaning I'm a pretty friendly person. So I find that people respond more to my personality than they do to my looks. Um I never really felt when I was fat that people treated me poorly because I was fat necessarily. And when they did, I kind of felt like I knew it. Like, sorry. Um, I kind of felt like my instincts would tell me if that was why they were treating me badly or whatever. Um, if they had some sort of pre-designed um, issue with me just based on how I looked. Wow, my hair is really a mess. So, um, but I will say this. Um, I get a lot more second glances, especially from men. Men take many more liberties in how they look at me. Um, meaning like, for example, it, it, I had an interesting experience just today at the weight loss, um, surgery clinic. When you go into the weight loss surgery clinic, everyone's looking at you. The staff is looking at you to see how far you've come along. They're giving you the up and down. The the other patients in the clinic are looking at you like, oh, is she a patient? She's thin. And, and assessing that, whatever that means for them. Um, but I there was a man who, that was there for his, with his wife. I think it was his wife. Um, and he probably stared me up and down for a solid minute and a half. Like he was just like. And he was, kind of, and I was just like, I just ignored him. I was just like, you were so disgusting. Like, he was not, I mean, he was, ugh. Anyway, um, men do that more. Um, I definitely noticed that women give me the once over more often, to, not necessarily in a bitchy way, just in an observation. I do that all the time. I, just because I'm looking at people, right? I'm an observational person. But um, do people treat me differently? Not, I mean... I don't think so. I mean, not on the whole. Like, when I walk into stores, I had a friend um, say to me that she felt um, that the customer service reps at stores were more friendly to her now that she'd lost weight than she what, than they were when she was fat. That's not my experience. Um, so, yeah, I, I, kind of. You know what I mean? Like, I definitely get more attention from men. Some of it is more liberal than I wish it were, should than I think it should be, is what I meant to say. Um, and I think people are pretty nice to me overall. So yeah, that's my answer. I hope that helps, Lori. Um, or I hope that answers your question. Um, Jamie Jones asked how to avoid regain. Um, unfortunately, Jamie, I am not in a point in my journey to advise on that. Um, I just gained nine pounds, but in my defense, not to any behavior of my own. It was, it was a physical reaction to a, the steroid shot for my shoulder. Um, but I, I think from the research that I've done, for the most part, regain happens. Some of it has to do with getting into bad habits again, getting too comfortable. Um, I've given a lot of thought to this as well. Not so much as the, the question is avoiding regain, but how do I not gain the weight back, like in general? And 
And I've been angry about my answer because the answer is I'm not normal. I am not a normal person. I have to eat less than most people. I have to eat less calories even. than my, I mean, Even my nutritionist today, she's like, 1,400 calories is fine. I was like, yeah, but for my body, honestly, like, it's it's too much because I was eating 1,400 calories two years ago and couldn't get, you know, um, couldn't lose weight. So, I mean, who knows how much of that I was actually, was actually true. Maybe I was... Sorry, my boyfriend just texted me. I love him. Um, time out. My boyfriend just texted me that he loved the enchilada. Because um, I made an enchilada, a green chili enchilada bake last night, and it was so good. So anyway, this is your time, not his time. So let me go back to you. <laughs> um, so I don't really know how to avoid, re avoid regain, but I would say that if you find yourself in a regain situation, don't panic. Um, and I'm going to say this just for you, not just for you, but for me as well, because I'm going to come back to this video if I, when I, when, in, not when, not if, but when I get to that point, um, don't panic, go back to basics, right? Um, and if it keeps, if it keeps happening and you're doing everything like right, then go see your doctor, go see your nutritionist, go see your clinic that you had surgery through. Um, I was going back to being angry about not being a normal person. Like I'm not a normal person. I don't metabolize the way normal people do. Um, this math, simple math in <laughs> the simple math in simple math out doesn't work for me. Um, I wish it did because it makes sense. Like I could, I can do the math and I can be like, okay, you know, but I'd still be losing three pounds a week if it were math in math out. Like, you know, obviously it's not. Um, so Jamie, unfortunately, I don't have a great answer for you for that. And back to basics, obviously that's super cliche and everybody says that, but it's the best answer I have having not gone through it that like really yet, you know, sorry. Um, Ashley Riddle wants me to try on an outfit for my smallest weight. Ashley, I am going to do that. I'm going to wait until I get to my two year mark and or goal, whichever I hit first. So I will do that for you, but I'm going to wait until later. Mainly because I'm super, super busy today because Lauren Losing is coming into town and I'm trying to get my nails done and I have Sandra and Christina coming in town and I'm like super busy trying to get everything done. I don't have time to do it. I'm sorry. Um, but I will do it next time, I promise. Not at, like at my next Q&A or the goal video or whatever. I'll definitely, definitely do it this year. Um, Michael May asks, which I'm so happy he asked a question. Thank you, Michael. Um, good and bad things that have come into my life since weight loss surgery. Um, I would say the good things that have come into my life are definitely the um, the weight loss surgery community, um, the friends that I've made from the community. I feel particularly close to several of you. Um, just the level of support and interaction that I receive, not just getting, but also able to give. Like I feel like I'm in a point in my journey journey where people reach out to me and I'm able to give some support as well, and that is super awesome. I feel really good about that. Like kind of paying it forward. You know what I mean? Like I felt like I got support early on and continue to get support and now I can kind of pay it forward. Um, I hope to do that in other ways as well. Like I'm going to do a workout challenge. Um, it is a beach body challenge, uh, in August and I'm going to do Brazilian butt lift. So if you want to do it, let me know. It's going to be super fun. Um, and I hope to be able to continue to pay it forward and motivate and, um, strive for improvement both in myself and in others. So, um, that's all this has been about for me. I mean, I'm shocked at how much I've delved into the community since just before surgery, um, just in watching videos, and then since then being on Facebook and getting to know everyone, and then the meet and greets and meeting everybody, and it's just been amazing. I've made some really, really, li I hope, long life um, connections, and I, I think that's the biggest good thing that's come out of um, this. Also, I would say... Um, uh, on the flip side of that, it has strained a few other relationships in ways I wasn't expecting. Um, and I think some of that has been me and some of that has been expectations I've put on those people that they are just not meeting. And whether that means that that friendship maybe is, uh, or friendships are, um, winding down or, or whatever, um, that is to be determined. Uh, I, I think sometimes I get in my head and I start to see, um, a certain cycle and I can't get out of it. So I'm just kind of waiting and playing it by ear and, and, um, but for the most part, all of my friends have been super supportive. I've not had anybody. I mean, it's been, it's been a blessing really. It's been such a blessing. Um, other bad things that have come from the journey is that year post-op when the hormonal stuff was happening that happened to me 
pretty hard. That whole don't make a major decision that Lace RNY put out a video last year about how like the five ways to not fuck up your life post weight loss surgery. I took that to heart. And granted, I was almost a year out by the time that she made those videos. But um, but it meant a lot to me because I I'll be honest, I would have left my boyfriend 10 times last year had I trusted my feelings. And I didn't trust my feelings because I thought this could be hormonal. And I'm telling you on the almost to the to almost to the day, like that month of my one year surge anniversary, I was totally in love with him again. Guess what? He didn't change, but my hormones calmed down. Um, that one year mark, I mean, it's not like a magic number, but it, it really does make a difference. So that, that was important for me to remember was for how angry I got, for how irritated I got, how frustrated I got in my relationship, that a lot of that was stemming from me, a lot of it. Um, and for me to just wait it out. And try to be as nice as possible. It was really hard. <laughs> um, another frustrating thing um, about weight loss surgery is, and I kind of just touched on this a minute ago, is that anger at being at not being normal. Like finally accepting that, yes, I've had weight loss surgery. Yes, that helped me drop 115, 120 pounds. No, it will never be easy. I feel like I've reached the point in my journey that this is the hardest part. Like I can eat more. I have less. I mean, I still have restriction, but it's I can eat more before I get there. Um, and I can eat, like almost everything settles well, so I could eat anything. So it's up to me. And before I would throw up if I ate too, and I still throw up if I eat too much, but like that point is moved out further. You know what I'm saying? Um, before I'd have a stomach ache or a nice, you know, if I ate too much sugar, I'd crash. Like those things have abated over time. Um, so, okay, sorry. Um, my friend, speaking of my friend who just, um, who just, goes into stores and says she's be treated differently now, but she just texted me. That's so funny. Um, although I don't understand the question. Anyway, she asked me what size my dual monitors are. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> I mean, I don't have dual monitors, so. Um, I don't know what you're talking about. Anyway, I'll answer that one. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm getting distracted. Okay. So, um, other, so I'm still angry about not being normal and always having to battle this, not just my weight, um, but, um, eating addiction, binging, being full Tuesday. I will say, um, this is a great example. Tuesday, um, I had great workout. I did a couple workouts. I was eating well all day. And all of a sudden at lunch, I had to be full all day long. I ate hand to mouth all day long. I felt that restriction uh, to the, an uncomfortable level all day long because I kept eating Tuesday. I did that all day Tuesday. So, I mean, you know, I have to battle that my whole life. I mean, that's never going to go away. I, and I'm pissed off about it. I'm pissed off. But it, it is, I mean, there's no point in being angry. I just have to accept it. I'm just, it sucks. And, and that's certainly a bad thing. And it's not necessarily something that's come into my life since weight loss surgery, but I am reminded, you know. Um, another really good thing, though, that's come into my life since weight loss surgery or, or that's happened since weight loss surgery is that my, my relationship really has flourished. Um, my boyfriend and I are getting along better than ever. We're communicating better. We're more on the same page about goals and, and life. And um, I make a conscious effort every day to be kind because it it is easy for me to just curl up in a ball and ignore everybody. I, I know that's hard to, to imagine, but, you know, sometimes I just want my own space. And instead of being like, ah, you know, I'm irritated with you. And not that I'm a bitch. I'm not. But um, uh, I, I make an effort to, to reward him for being awesome. You know, instead of being like, why are you touching me when I'm feeling irritable or whatever, you know, like, I don't want that. I don't want to. So it's good. It's our relationship is amazing. Um, Kim Gibbs asked things that I do regularly that I didn't do before. Um, now, so things I do regularly now that I didn't do before. Item number one, the running man. That's true. I do the running man now. I tell myself how to do it. I never did it as a kid. I never did it, obviously, as, a, as an adult. But now I do it all the time. I dance all the time. I always move to music, but I dance all the time. Like, I can't. If there's music on, I'm pretty much moving. So I love it. Um, I had really bad feet problems at my heaviest weight um, or the few years before surgery. So now I hike and walk and do activities like that just require me to walk, like even shopping. Like I don't really care about shopping, but now it's not like a whole ordeal to go shopping because I know I can. Like my feet don't hurt. Like if someone like, you know, when the girls were down uh, a few several months ago um, and they wanted to go to the Woodburn Outlet Mall, like before I would have been like, uh, 
you know, and I, now it's not even a second. Like, I don't even think about it. Of course, I'd go to the Woodburn Outlet Mall and walk around with you for four hours. Like, that's not a big deal. Um, but before it was. So um, I'd say those are the big ones for sure. Um, Lisa VSG Inglis asked, what's on my bucket list now that I would um, now that I would have never thought about doing when I was overweight? Zip lining. I would have never thought about zip lining. I for sure thought I'd break the cords. Well, and I probably was over the weight limit too. Um, and now I actually kind of want to do it. Uh, I don't know if it's a bucket list item, but I'll, I'll, I'll do it at some point for sure. Um, I don't like rafting. I don't like white rider ra water rafting, but I would like to raft eat more like on a, like a float or um, like calm rapids. Um, I always thought I'd sink the boat. I have rafted in the past, but I think... Um, I, I don't get the thrill of the whitewater rafting, but if it were calmer or, or slower rapids, I think that that would be really fun. So that's something I really want to do. Um, going clubbing. I know that that sounds really weird, but I've gone more clubbing since surgery than I ever had in my 20s, um, which is like five times. Like I've been to a club like five times and not even a club, but like maybe three, three or four times. Um, but I really want to... Um, do more of that because I like dancing and I like, um, I like contemporary pop music and, um, I like to dance and I don't really have a lot of people that want to go with me, but if you guys want to, let me know. You can come visit and we'll go clubbing. <laughs> um, per, uh, personal training. I want to become a personal trainer someday. I think that I would be really good at that. Um, part of that. So I have joined, um, Beachbody. I'm sure I'll talk about this more later. I, I hope that that doesn't make any of you leave me because you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, the way most people think Beachbody is, but I, I've done it because I have a lot of the DVDs and I see it as a progression, um, to, um, my personal training. Um, so I am working on that certification. I'm reading and starting to read the materials and stuff. So, um, I'm, I'm working on that, but this is kind of just a way for me to get some exposure and some experience with working with people. And so that's, that's where I'm starting. So, um, that's on my bucket list. And then CrossFit. I'd like to try CrossFit. I don't know if my neck and shoulder will ever let me. I have a Groupon actually that expires like the end of this month. So I'm going to use it. I'm going to try it and I'll see what I can do. That's all I can do. I've got an injury. I'm going to say I've got some tendonitis in my shoulder and we'll see what they say. Um, those are my bucket list items, honestly. Um, I really like to also go to Nicaragua. Why Nicaragua? Because I actually have a very good friend that's moving there. Um, and I don't see why not go visit him and his wife. It'll be fun. And uh, Amy gets a VSG asks, do I want kids? And that does, does that impact my des desire to, um, have plastics? Absolutely. It impacts my desire to have, not my desire to have plastics, but timing of plastics. And I do not know yet about kids. That's a great question. And one that I ask myself and talk about regularly. Um, I don't know. I do not know. <laughs> I have never had a strong desire to have children and I've never had a strong desire to not have children. So it's hard for me because, um, most people say, I think the reason to have kids is because you have a strong desire to have kids. And most people say that not to have kids because they have a strong desire to not have kids. So other than that, like all the other reasons to have children or to not have children are pretty frivolous. Like I would actually love to hear your guys' thoughts because I've heard them all, but, um, maybe I haven't. So I can't, we can't think of any good reason to, or any good reason not to like my boyfriend's like, we should have kids cause there's nothing better to do. And I'm like, we should not have kids because we can travel and that we can have money. <laughs> like we'll have money to do things. And that's true. That's a good reason actually. <laughs> not have kids. I don't know. I don't have the biological clock. Um, I like children. I don't dislike children at all. I think I'm relatively good, but awkward with children. I've got some kids I get around and I love them and I love enjoying them. And I also like leaving them <laughs> when I go home. So I don't, uh, God, my hair's so frizzy. I don't really know. Amy, that's not a very good question, but if I have kids, I will probably get my um, arms done soon. Uh, this, maybe this winter, like next winter into the early 2016. And if I have, um, children, I will wait to do breasts and boobs, um, later. And if I don't have children, I will do the later also, but, um, sooner than I would if I didn't have kids or did, did have kids. Sorry. So those are the questions that, um, one, one series of questions. And then I have another one. And since we're only 20 minutes in, and I think Lauren did her, um, her Q and a video with like 45 minutes or something crazy. I'm just going to keep going. 
I hope that you guys are okay with that. So here are my questions from Facebook. Um, Faith KP asks, <laughs> where does your badassery come from? <laughs> and I'm going to piggyback on that and say, Trisha Pretty O'Neill says, why are you so fabulous? Which, of course, I'm super flattered by those questions because thank you. Um, but but honestly, like I thought about this and I was like, oh, what's something funny and sarcastic I can say in response to that? But I have to be honest with you, like I wasn't always a badass and I wasn't always fabulous. I've always been great. I've always been awesome and a good friend and a good person. And I've always tried hard. Um, but I didn't always like myself. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I think that is where most badasseriness and um, fabulousness comes from is confidence. And um, I will tell you where that came from a lot of work. It came from a lot of work. It came from a lot of therapy. It came from a lot of bad relationships and being fed up and trying to break the cycle of, um, you know, childhood stuff and, and relationship habits and, um, and estimating my self-worth at not being very high, um, and wanting to break out of that. So I did a lot of work. I did 12 step programs around codependencies and, um, adult children of alcoholics. My, my dad's not an alcoholic per se. He's more of a, um, he's, he's got or had a drug problem, but, um, you know, I, I grew up around that. So it's hard. Uh, and, and I did a lot of work. I did like two years of like all I did was work the steps and go to meetings and um, therapy, intensive therapy and and read self-help books and talked to people and processed through why I wasn't enough. And now I I don't think about that anymore. Now it is habit. If you tell yourself enough, you will believe it. And that's just the fact. Tell yourself every day, look in the mirror every day and say, I am enough as I am right now. Do that three times a day in the mirror, in your face, in your eyes. And I'm telling you, you will think it's stupid and you will say it out loud and you're like, this is so dumb. But I'm telling you, give it four weeks and let me know how you feel. So that's what I did. I did those things along with other just, you know, working through my shit and I work through my shit and I feel better and I'm not perfect. Um, but I'm confident and I like myself. I think I'm a good, I think I'm a good person. I get insecure sometimes. Don't get me wrong. I have my issues. Um, I don't think I'm all that, but, um, but I know I'm worth something just inherently by being myself. Does that make sense? I don't have to try to bend myself every which way to, um, accommodate everybody else's stuff. So I can just be myself and I can be happy with that. So um, Brad Chalker asked me if questions had to be family friendly, but didn't ask me what the question was. Of course they didn't, but I don't know what his question is. So I guess better look next time, Brad. Um, Gretchen VSG for me said, asked, did your taste change post-op? Uh, do you eat something now that you didn't like previously? Do you like any foods you used to love now turn you off? Do any foods you used to love now turn you off? Um, did my chain taste change post-op? No. Um, I would say, uh, a little bit into terms of, um, I don't like things too sweet, but I was kind of veering that way pre-op anyway, but after post-op, it was very pronounced. I didn't like things, um, too sweet. And actually one other thing that's changed is texturally, I don't really like smoothies. I, I can get them down, but you can't make me drink them every day. You just can't. Um, I like my, my smoothies shaken, not stirred. And, um, I like them shaken and I like them thin. So when I do like my Shakeology or some other protein powders, like I don't, I don't, uh, I don't do eight ounces of water. I do 16, a couple ice cubes and I shake it. I don't, oh my God, I'm doing that motion again. And I shake it, um, instead of blending it. So it's still, it, it actually thins out as the ice melts and stuff. Um, but other than that, I like all the same foods. I would say I eat Brussels sprouts more now than I did pre-op. Um, but all the other vegetables I like, I still like. All the vegetables I didn't like, I don't like. All the same meats, all the same stuff. Um, so, yeah, I wouldn't say that there's anything I eat now or don't eat now that I liked or didn't like before. Um, I will say that the one thing I found that settles the hardest is ice cream. Um, I have a hard time with ice cream in terms of uh, my dairy intolerance. It's mild, but it's very pronounced when I have ice cream, which is kind of a good thing. So it keeps my ingestion of that um, low. And um, sushi. 
I loved sushi pre-op. I still love sushi, but I cannot eat that sticky sushi rice. It has sugar in it. It is sticky as shit. And it, as soon as it hits my sleeve, my sleeve is pissed. I can force down maybe one whole roll if I took a long time to do it. But why force it? I mean, I can probably have half a roll, but that's all I can eat. And so, eh, you know, I kind of just pass on it. Um, okay, Colleen Benyon says, I love the taste question. So she loved the uh, question that Gretchen asked. Also, how has your life changed for the better or worse? I think I've kind of answered, well, I mean, she has several questions, so I'm just going to go through that. My life has not changed for the worse. Um, other than my insecurities are different now. Um, feeling enormous or feeling fat, having fat days is relative. I had those before. I had days I felt great before. I have those days now. That's not necessarily for worse, but, you know, I think you think you're going to lose a bunch of weight and you're just going to be happy forever and it's going to make you happy and it, and it doesn't. Like, you have to figure out your shit and whatever, in, like, I feel confident. I like my body. I think I'm doing well, but I still have days that I feel like a blob, you know? I still have days where I'm like, nothing looks good. Nothing fits. Blah, blah, blah. You know, like I hate everything in, in my closet because um, nothing looks good on me. Um, I still have days like that for sure. Um, but in, in terms of the good things, like I, I'm so, I mean, obviously I've got this neck and shoulder thing that's going on. So my level of activity is modified, but I can do anything. There is nothing I can't do. That is not the case before. Um, that is enormously a big deal. Like just, I did the surgery to be active and I am active and that's it. So goal accomplished, right? I just happen to have lost 115 pounds in the process. So that's pretty awesome. <laughs> Um, she asked about, um, if people treat me differently, I already answered that. Um, what has been my biggest struggle? I would say my biggest struggle, struggle is still volume. I'm a volume eater, um, and, and, and dually, uh, getting into a binge mode, which I hadn't had post-ops until about February, March. I got into binge mode and it was really hard. Um, yeah, so. Uh, just dealing with like, I can't eat this or shouldn't eat this volume of food, but I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to. Um, or when I'm in a binge cycle, it's more of a need. It's more of a drive. It's more of a, um, I have to be full all the time. It's very, it's very weird. Um, but I'm not like that all the time. Like I, I, I can't say, uh, that I'm always a food addict because I'm not always a food addict. There are times that I could sit here with a thing bowl of cookies and not eat the cookies and other times where I can eat just two and other times where I could eat. I literally have to have like all of them like that happens. Like, I don't know what the difference is, what, what, what changes, but that, um, is, is, is definitely a huge struggle for me and how was before and continues to be now that I have this tool. Um, what would you say to those who are a few months out? Follow the rules. Don't drink alcohol. That's what I would say. Um, I started drinking alcohol like three months out, and I wish I would have waited six. I wish I would have waited a year. Um, my golden period was about six to seven months. Don't drink until you pass the golden period. Your golden period will last longer. That's my opinion. That's what I would say. Follow the rules. Get your protein. Don't eat a bunch of shit. Um, there's plenty of time to eat your shit. Eat the shit that you're craving. There's plenty of time for that take advantage of your golden rule. You don't have to be inflexible. You don't have to not have bites of things, but for the most part, follow the rules. Don't drink. That's what I would say. That's my advice. That's what I wish I had done differently. Um, did I tell everyone that I was having surgery? Yeah, uh, I told a lot of people. I've told a lot more people since. I still have not, I have two Facebooks and I still have not like publicly come out on my personal Facebook. I probably will, but I haven't yet. I don't know why. Mainly because of high school contacts, like who gives a shit, you know? Um, if people don't know, uh, if people don't know, do you tell them or what, what do you say to them? Uh, yeah, I mean, I do tell them if people ask me how I did it, there's only a certain few people I have not come public to like an old boss of mine. I haven't mentioned it. Um, high school friends, I haven't mentioned it, but for the most part, I tell strangers, like I'm proud um, of this journey. I don't think this was the easy way out at all. If people think that they certainly haven't said it to me. Um, and they'd be wrong as you all know. So, um, yeah, I, I pretty much am pretty open about it. Again, I haven't come out like on Facebook and said it, but um, I, I'm not ashamed of it in any way. Um, so yeah, I did tell a lot of people. I had a lot of support. I'm very lucky to have very good people and good family in my life. 
Um, my mother was obviously, she was the first person I really told, um, was nervous, but not unsupportive. You know what I'm saying? Like she was concerned, um, cause it's a big surgery, but she's happy for me. Um, Colleen also asks, what are my best NFVs that been best NSVs that I've had? <sighs> there have been so many Colleen. I couldn't even tell you. Um, the time that the guy, my, a uh, friend of my mother's picked me up at Costco off the ground. And I wasn't even like, I was like right at 200 pounds. I was like, what the fuck? My boyfriend picked me up once. It was only for a split second, but he picked me up once. Um, going on a hike last weekend by myself and wanting to do a second hike, like wanting to go and do more. Um, having people see me and say, you're so tiny. Or, which I'm not, by the way, I'm really not tiny. Like, my upper body is kind of small, I guess, but my lower body is, it's, 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 it's voluptuous, let me tell you. Um, so, I love that, though. Or people, like, when I was at, in San Diego, people would say to me, you're so much smaller than you look in your pictures. And I'm, I, I'm like, stop it, stop it, tell me again, tell me again. <laughs> so, um. I think doing that weightlifting challenge that I did, uh, I think it was like September, it was like September, October, no, it was October, November, December, it was three months, 12 weeks. That was a huge NSV because I had never lifted like that before. I'd never lifted weights like that before knowing I could and seeing my, I think I lost three pounds in those 12 weeks, but I'm not kidding. My entire body changed. I dropped an entire size. Um, the composition of my body changed. It was, it, I have never felt better than I felt in those three months. It was, it was incredible. Um, there's so many, there's so many, I mean, crossing my legs, fitting in a chair, being able to, you know, all I ever wanted to do was go to the movies and put my, put my knees up like this. Look, I can do that. And I can do it with both feet. I just don't have room. Um, big, those, those things, I mean, a lot to me for silly reasons. I don't know. Um, Wake Me Up BSG asks, I know you have been with the same partner through all of this. Any body issues now that you didn't have before when intimate? Yes. Um, I would say that our intimacy is is better and more often than it was before. Um, my boyfriend thinks I'm the hottest thing since sliced bread. Sorry, I heard. Oh, okay. It was my neighbor. I was like, is my boyfriend walking up to the front door right now. Um, but when we do it in certain positions, like everything I have in the front drags on the floor. <laughs> it's really bad. <laughs> so yeah, um, he doesn't care. He doesn't even see it in those, you know, like he doesn't see it, but I do. I look down and I'm just like, what the fuck is going on down there? It's bad. He loves me though. I mean, he thinks I'm great, but yes, uh, definitely some insecurities. Um, bef before it was that I couldn't necessarily, um, m move very well. Uh, I, I was always flexible, but now I can move a lot better. I'm more flexible. So there's more things that we can do. And that's, that, that's, that makes up for the rest. Um, Rosemary Foote asks, what are your top three challenges you have in day-to-day in -day life relating to your sleeve? Um, I've kind of already addressed this, but I would say um, making good choices because I always want macaroni and cheese. Today, I thought for sure I was going to come home and not have macaroni and cheese. I wanted it so fucking bad. I came home and had a sandwich instead. Now, was that the best option? No, because I had two pieces of bread. Um, but I had bread and turkey and lettuce and cheese. And, you know, like it was fine. It was better than macaroni and cheese by half of the calories. Um, so that's number one is making good choices. Two is um, volume. Um, I should have had half the sandwich. I ate the entire sandwich. I took my time. I should have eaten one half of a sandwich in a half an hour and put the other half away. That's what I should have done. That's difficult for me to do. I always serve myself up more. I, I try not to. I really try to measure my food, and I'm usually pretty good about it. But um, but sometimes I don't. And so, you know, volume. 
Um, three, drinking. I, I'm not saying like I have a problem with drinking, um, but it's hard for me to not want to drink socially and that doesn't help me meet my goals. So I try not to drink during the week. I try not to drink at home, but you know, my boyfriend likes to have a glass or two of wine a night. Um, I, I don't do that with him, but I want to. Um, I certainly go through periods where I drink more at home tonight than, um, I, than other times. And now I'm not in a time of doing that, but you know, going to happy hour and not having a drink. That's hard for me, you know, um, when I'm like eye on the prize, but I want to have a glass of wine with a friend, you know? So, um, having those decisions day to day is, is difficult. I'm a social person. I, I go out a lot. Um, you know, I could easily, I could easily drink two or three nights a week out, just out being out at dinner, being out a happy hour, being out with friends, parties, whatever. And, um, choosing not to is hard. So, um, those are my three struggles. Um, Jenny Smith says, do you want to get married and have children? So I already answered the children one. Um, I do want to get married and I've been with my guy for about six years and I would really like to see that happen soon. So there we go. We'll see. I think it might happen. We'll see. Um, I actually know it will. It's just a matter of time. He's a slow mover. Um, Amy gets a VSG also asked again, where do you think your self-confidence comes from? You seem quite self-confident at your heaviest. And of course now, and again, I go back to the other answer of why are you so fabulous? Um, which is that I did the work to become that way. I, I've not always been that way. I actually had quite, quite a bit of self-loathing 10 years ago, eight years ago. And I just, I just did the work. I, I know that that seems very trite and I don't mean it to sound that way like so casual, like, oh, if you just go to therapy, you'll figure shit out. That's not how I mean to sound it. I worked really hard. I cried lots of tears. I struggled. I let myself be treated terribly by friends and boyfriends and because I didn't think I deserved any better. Like I should take what I should, I can get right. Like I did, I did a lot. I didn't do the work like, oh, if you just open a self-help book, you'll get better. But I worked hard on, I worked hard and I'll just go, you know, anyway. So, um, is Roxy Griffith Griffin asks, um, is sex better now or before or the same in some ways in, I would say overall, it's the same in some ways. It's actually a little bit better in the sense that it's more often but in other ways, it's actually a little bit worse because for some reason it hurts more. Like I get worn out more. <laughs> like inside gets worn out. Is that TMI? I don't really know. So, um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how much to say about that. Um, but so yeah, good. Cause I'm having more sex. Um, bad because Sometimes it isn't as comfortable as it was before. Like, I, maybe my internal organs also have less padding. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's weird. But, uh, yeah, Roxy, good question. That was a terrible answer on my part. Um, Jen Hope Franklin asks, um, what, was, what was your exercise and eating like two years before surgery? So she asked several questions. So, um, oh, she says, were you into CrossFit, Paleo, and Dirty 30 then or only after surgery? Um, so Jen, yes, I was very much into paleo and I did boot camp. I didn't do CrossFit. It's CrossFit esque, but I did a boot camp workout prior. Um, I was very, very active in the gym I until the point where my feet wouldn't let me. I had, I have heel spurs in both my feet and they were in agony, um, trying to do any impact with the 200 at the time, 275 pound, 280 pound body. The lowest I got was 230 and that was doing HCG. Um, so that wasn't, that wasn't, that was all deprivation. That was 500 calories a day. It was very hard. Um, I gained 60 pounds promptly thereafter because obviously that's hard. Um, but yes, I was, I did whole thirties. I did paleo eating. I ate, um, almost all paleo, uh, pre-op. Um, but my issue was volume and then I became inactive because of my feet. But for the most part, two years before surgery, I was eating very similar and working out even harder than I work out now. So yeah, I, a weight loss did not come easy to me. What, when someone would lose five or six or eight or 10 pounds a month, I would lose, um, I would lose two, you know, or I would lose like four pounds in like six months or something like, 
you know, not, not, yeah, it was very frustrating. My body just didn't want to let it go. Um, so I'm really grateful for the surgery, but yes. Um, yeah. So you said that you had a friend who was very active and eats good and, and is going through the process. And I, I feel like I was the same way. I ate too much, probably, um, too much, you know, I could eat a salad that was the size of my head. I can still do that now. It just takes me longer. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I did, I ate well, I ate clean. Um, even my boyfriend would tell you that like, I, I just, I, he's like, you deserved to have this because you ate so well and worked out so much before. So, you know what I mean? Like now I have the body that finally matches that. Um, Jen, you also asked, um, what are your losses every month during the first year? When did you, uh, when did your weight loss really slow down and, or stall for weeks? Um, I would say I've not had a stall for weeks yet. I'm either up a little or down a little. I, I've very rarely had more than uh, one week in a row where I've had no progress, um, one way or the other, I guess, um, no change in weight. Um, but I guess if you want to consider being up, or being in the same weight range, I'm in the same weight range now that I was in March um, or February even. So, I mean, I guess I'm in a stall now. I was, I was at 181.2. And now I'm at 186.6. I had the cortisone shot. I think I could have busted into the 170s had that shot not happened. So I think that stall is not entirely my fault. Um, but I'm definitely here. I'm definitely in the same. It took me a long time to get down to 181. And um, then it took no time at all to get back to 189 um, after that cortisone shot. So, um, but my losses every month during the first year were pretty consistently. The first couple months were probably like, 15, 20, 25 pounds. And then, um, you know, like, like the first month was probably 25. The second month was probably 15 and pretty much 10 pounds, 10 to 12 pounds a month after that for the first several months. I only lost dramatically like that for the first six to seven months. And then it was pretty much four to seven pounds a month after that. It slowed significantly around month seven or eight. So, um, and then, and then again, since, since this year, since December, really, it's been, some months, not at all. You know, some months I've gained four pounds. Some months I've lost three. Some months I've lost seven and gained eight. You know, I mean, it's it's weird. Um, how did I choose the name Fly Girl? Jen also asked. Um, Fly, F-L-Y-E, is actually my last name. So it was just a play on that. Uh, Mon Bean asks, how do I become your best friend? Um, <laughs> everyone's my best friend. What are you talking about? Um, no, she, she says in all seriousness, um, are you genuinely, truly happier now, um, in yourself than you were before surgery or have the issues just manifested themselves in different ways? I'm definitely happier in my body. Um, I'm not happy as happy as I think I should be. Um, I still see, pro you know, I'm still ha pretty hypercritical. I still feel very large. Um, I don't understand when people tell me I'm small. I'm like, I don't, let's not get crazy. You know, that's what my outcome usually is. Um, I'm getting so, I, I feel like I'm just talking so much now. I'm almost done though, you guys, I think. Yeah, almost done. Um, but it, uh, my overall level of happiness is high. I, I feel like I was happy before though, too, with the exception that I obsess so much about food and dieting and losing weight. And now I still obsess about those things, but so much less. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely happy. It's just in a different way. I'm happy that I can move my body more. I'm happy. My feet don't hurt. Um, I'm happy that I can go into the ha amount of happiness I can go. I get from going into any store and putting on a size medium or size 12 is infinite. Oh my God. I never thought I could find so much joy from going clothes shopping ever, ever, ever. I, oh my God. I'm blown away every time. Um, okay. I hope that answers your question. If it doesn't private message me, I'd be happy to talk to you. Um, Diane Brinig, sorry if I said that wrong. Um, how do you stay motivated through stalls and then get back on track with eating and going to the gym? Um, you know, I've done this a couple of ways, not so much stalls in weight, but stalls in progress in like internal progress and eating plan is I'll say, okay, I'm going to give myself the next three days. And then come that three days, like I'll eat whatever I want, as much as I want. And then when the day comes when I'm like, okay, this is it. This is back on track, whether it's Monday or Friday or whatever day, then that's it. Like I don't give myself a choice, like back on track. And am I perfect on the, when I'm back on track? No. But does that mean I'm eating fried food and ice cream and whatever during that time? No. So um, 
I just make a commitment to give myself some leeway. And then when that leeway is over, I hit, I, I don't give myself a choice. I'm like, I try to remember when I'm looking at a second, second cookie, like, is that going to get me to where I want to go? Where's the image of myself in my head? And is that going to help me get there? The answer is no. You know what I mean? Like, I, I can live my life without a second cookie. Sometimes I can't live without the first one. And that's okay because life is about having those things in moderation, right? But a second, third, fourth, fifth cookie, that's not moderation. That's not going to help me get anywhere. So I try to think of it like that. I am not perfect. I ate an entire sandwich for lunch today. Um, I probably won't eat again until, you know, for a long time. So, I mean, it all, calories wise, it does even out. But um, uh, I forgot the question. Sorry. I blanked. So yeah, I mean, sometimes I'm not that motivated, but I just, I honestly, you know what I do is I watch videos. I re-inspire myself by watching videos. I, um, reach out for support. People are always willing to be like, you can do this. You got this. You've gone this far. And I know that those are things that you can tell yourself and you probably do before when you're trying to deal with motivation, but sometimes having other people believe in you when you don't believe in yourself is all it takes for me to buck up. Honestly, like having people be like, I believe in you, you can do this. And I'm like, oh, wow, I don't totally don't feel that way right now. But the fact that you do helps me. And so it, and it does. Um, so hopefully that helps. I hope that answers your question. Um, Kim Stephanopoulos asks, have I always been so sweet and outgoing? And the answer is, of course. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry. That was too easy. Um, I have always been sweet, I think. Um, I have not always been outgoing. I actually spent um, most of my 20s as a complete hermit. Um, I didn't have very many friends, and I studied a lot, and I didn't go out. So um, I actually got quite emotional about this yesterday, feeling like especially dealing with my injury or whatever's going on with my stuff. Um, like I wasted my entire 20s, and now that I have the body and the physical aptitude to be able to do the things I really want, now I'm being hindered by this, and it's really frustrating and really sad. Um but yeah, I didn't do anything in my 20s. I gained weight. I stayed inside. I didn't make friends. And I was really unhappy with my life. And I was really unhappy with myself. And so while I was always sweet, I was also super codependent. So you couldn't be relied on if I was sweet because I was supposed to be sweet because I was trying to make you like me or if I was just generally sweet. Like now I'm just myself, which is if you think I'm sweet, then that's great. I will take it. I like being sweet. Um, sweet like honey. Um, but yeah, outgoing is something that um, came with I was scared. You know what it was? Is I was fat, really fucking fat. And I was scared. I was scared of rejection. I was scared of living my life. I was scared of going out and being laughed at. I never was, by the way. I mean, some people have those experiences. I never did. I was very lucky um, that no one ever winked at me walking down the street or said shit under their breath or did all the things that mean people can do. I never experienced that. So when I, I, when I was in graduate school, I put a sticker on my mirror that says, do not be afraid to experience life. And I had to read it every day and I finally just started going out and starting having friends and starting to trust that people liked me because I was nice, because I was a good person. Like I deserved to be liked, you know, I didn't deserve to sit at home by myself all the time and eat ice cream. Like I could do better. Um, I deserved better for myself. So, um, yeah, that was, that's, that's what changed me is that I started to actually like want to not be so afraid. And now I'm not. Now I'm just like all about it. Whatever. Um, Willow Girl Cam asks, I find I am always looking at the ornaments slash sculptures behind you. What are they? This is the last question. So um, this, I'll start with this one. This is actually something that my friend got me in Africa when she was visiting a family member there. She took a vacation. Um, and so, yeah, I think it's beautiful. And she bought it for me as a gift. Isn't that lovely? So this is from Africa. This is a little thing that my friend got me. Um, my very good friend, Jenna, got this for me. It says, it's a little angel. And she got it for me, I think, Christmas, like, two years ago. It says, friends. In the end, it's our friendships that live in the spaces between our biggest life moments. It's our friendships that hold the divide between life and love, fear and compassion, doubt and courage. It's our friendships that crack, open our hearts to the light within ourselves, waiting to be seen, waiting to be born. Hmm. So I love that. And then this is actually a sculpture that I got in Mexico last year in March when I went with my friend and her partner and my boyfriend and some family of hers. And I saw this and I, I saw this at one place and we I actually went back 
a couple days later to get it because um, I thought it was too expensive. And then I just had, I knew it was worth it because I kept thinking about it and I had to have it. I am in love with it. So this is it. This is just it here. But yeah, isn't that beautiful? Thank you for commenting on that. I love them too. So, and of course this is Kent's plant. I don't really do plants. But um, he got this, and it was just a little baby, and it's thrived, and it's doing well, and it looks beautiful in here. So I'm glad about it. Um, you guys, that's the end of my q and I am um, at 50 minutes. I should have done this in two parts, but, you know, if Lauren could do it, I can do it, right? I mean, she's the golden child, so I'm just going to copy her in everything I do from now on. <laughs> Love you, Lauren. <laughs> um, and, Lauren, if you're not – I can't imagine you'll be watching, but I will see you in, like, six hours or something crazy, seven hours. It's like four o'clock in the afternoon. I'll see you at like eleven o'clock. What? Woo! Um, Waffle Plus a weekend. Eighteen months towards anniversary tomorrow. I cannot believe it. I'm gonna shut up because I've been talking for fifty minutes. So, um, if you guys have any other questions specific to any of my answers, um, uh, you can private message me on Facebook or comment on the video, and um, let me know if you're up for that challenge in August. It'll be super fun. Get our butts going. Woo! Okay. You guys keep it fly out there. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Mwah. I love you.